Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about my transition from being an i3WM fanboy to a DWM fanboy. Uh, I've debated a little while on how to d talk about this, and I've made some notes, but the gist of it comes down to is... The reason why people use DWM isn't the reason why I use DWM, so that's the reason why I'm making this video. Uh, when I first decided that I wanted to try the, the dynamic window manager or whatever, it's, I think that's what it's called, or st stands for DWM, I was a complete lost. I, I mean, I, I created a video, I mean, maybe a month ago, a month and a half ago now, um, and if you watch that, you can just tell I'm completely lost as to what DWM, you know, actually is. Um... Or not actually was, but how to use it, like how to theme it, how to get around in it, how to change key bindings, any of that stuff. It was completely lost. Uh, and that situation carried on for quite some time. Uh, and it took me, I don't know, two or three weeks to really get my head around how to theme, do any, really do anything in DWM. I, I spent most of my time still in i3 and just kept coming back to DWM because I wanted to try it out and see if I could, you know, be okay at it. Uh, and during that time, I was still a big proponent of using i i3. It wasn't until I really kind of wrapped my head around what DWM is that I figured out that it or that I decided that it was better than what I was using before, which is i3. Um, so, uh, there are a few reasons why I've decided that i3, because I've now been using DWM full-time now for close to a month, and I've just come to love it. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about why I'm, I transitioned from DWM, but also why I think it's better than i3 for some people, not all people, not but some people, uh, and, and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Um, so let's uh, l let me show you what my my DWM looks like. We'll just uh, transition over to the, oops, wrong one, D wrong scene. Whoops. Oh well. <laughs> uh, that was for my gaming channel, but that I never update. Anyways, so this is what my i3 looks like. And this is a brand new one dark rice that I just did today. Um, I like ricing things, as you can you know tell from some of my videos. Um, but this is what my DWM looks at, like after hours and hours of learning how to do things. I, I, and I've themed things differently a few times, and, I'll, and I, I've gotten my head wrapped around it. So one of the things I like best about DWM is the direct editing of the source code. So if I CD into my um, DWM f file here, this is all, these are all the files that make up DWM. There aren't any more located anywhere else. Uh, anything you want to change, you can change here. Um, and you, it's not like i3, if we do that, if we get out of this and go into my... This is my i3 config, and you can tell, we can do just do vim fig h, and you can tell one's more complicated than the other, for sure, right? And that's not a, you know, necessarily a good or a bad thing on either way, but I've pr learned to prefer the way DWM does things, mostly because I know exactly what I'm creating. When I add something here, there's a translation layer between me and the actual short source code um, that I don't see and I don't understand. So I, I don't even know, know what language i3 is written in. I know what i3, what DWM is written in, it's written in C, and I can understand that I don't know anything about C, but I can learn it, right? I don't, because I'm not sure what i3 is learned. I3 has this configuration file, which is basically just plain text, and it's not it's not a bash script like uh, BSPWM has. It's it's just really weird, um, and this is great for new users 
because it's really easy to understand. There's not a, once you get around the little bit of syntax that you have to learn, it's great. There's no weird places where you have to, you know, if you don't put a semicolon or a comma somewhere, you're not going to break your config file. Per, I mean, usually. Whereas w when you're writing in C, you have to have semicolons in certain places. You have to have brackets in certain places for, I mean, really, seriously, what are these brackets here for? I don't understand that. I, I don't know anything about C. So what, uh, I mean, this is defining a, a, a variable. So I'm not understanding what the, the brackets are for. I still don't know. And it doesn't bother me that I don't know. Um, but I at least can understand that if I learn those things, I'm directly manipulating the source code. And that's kind of reassuring. Um, it, it's also provided a challenge, something that I didn't really get with i3. Uh, I enjoy learning new things. So like eventually I'll learn what those brackets are for. You know, like I'm not sure why they're brackets there. So I'll eventually I'll learn those things. Um, so directly editing the source code is you know, is great, um, but it's not for everybody. And I'll, like I said, I'll talk about that a little bit in, in a little bit. So another thing that I, I really do prefer is that the status bar up here is actually included with DWM. I don't have to go through and try to figure out how to get polybar to work. Uh, I could use polybar, I suppose. There's a patch for that. Um, this just is here now this extraneous stuff up here this the status bar that's not there and it's not included um there's a, another program that you have to use to do that but it's all it's kind of a uh, it's more of a i would call it a plugin than an actual program so basically that's just running a whole bunch of scripts and uh printing them out that's all it does um and that's great it's it took me a while to get my head around it, but I enjoy the fact that if I want to make uh, uh, edits to this bar, I can do pretty much anything right from the standard config file in DWM. Now, you can do that kind of in i3 because i3 has its own bar as well, i3 bar. Um, but the limitations are a little bit more. It's, it's a little bit more weird, and it's not as extensible as what I, you know, this is really. Um, so that's another one. Now, if you listen to people who use uh, DWM, you'll hear them say that the patching is, the pain, is a pain in the ass, and I agree with that. But I also think it's fun. Um, I'm one of those people who, enjoy, like I said, I enjoy a challenge. I enjoy <laughs> I enjoy learning new things. Uh, I'm not. I'm never going to be an expert in anything, but I do enjoy going through and learning things that I don't know. So going through and learning how to patch. Uh, how to patch manually when something when the automatic patching thing fails has been really enjoyable for me because not necessarily because it's uh, not frustrating when something goes wrong but because I can go through and learn how to fix it and it allows me to tinker um, so that I think DW, of all the window managers man, window managers that I've tried DWM is the one that um, is the one that is best for me because because I'm a tinkerer, a tinkerer, tinkerer. <laughs> okay. Hard word to say. Um, so the uh, the next thing I want to talk about is the difference between i3 and uh, DWM. i3 is a uh, a manual tiling window manager. Basically, what that means is that you decide where you want the next window to spawn. So if you want it to spawn vertically or horizontally or over there or, you know, over here, over there, it does, you decide that. Um, and there's a lot of key bindings and complexity in determining, uh, a lot of complexity in t between you and the, op the window manager t of how you tell uh, i3 where things go. You know, there's five or six key bindings, you know, each one does, you know, several different things. Um, and it can be really, it can be kind of complicated. Um, and I used to like that. I used to like that. Hey, you know, I, I would argue that I want to be the one to decide where my windows go, not the window manager. And that's a perfectly valid argument. I think that that control that it gives you to put the window the next window you spawn where you want to spawn it is uh, is a good thing but dwm is a little bit different it's a dynamic tiling window manager which means that pretty much 
depending on what you know formats you have installed or patches and stuff all your windows are going to spawn in a predictable manner you don't get to decide where things are going they just spawn you know in a certain order and now i believe that this is the best way to do it um not necessarily be because it gives you more control because it doesn't it's actually less control but it's also more predictable half the time i would enter a mode like i'd enter vertical mode or horizontal mode in i3 and spawn a window where i didn't really want to because there's no indicator of what you know, mode you are in, and this, especially after you've themed something, because there, it, in stock i3, there is like a, a a weird way they manipulate the borders around windows that will indicate where your next window is going to be spawned. But if you've themed that away, it's harder to know where your window is going to be, because there's so many different possibilities where it could go. Now, if I spawn another window, it's just there, you know. So that I like that. Um, now, there are patches and stuff that will allow you to uh, change to different uh, layouts, and I have some of those installed, but I don't usually use them. I just use this master and, master and stack, I guess is what they call it now, uh, uh, layout, and it, it, it's really good. Um, it's just completely changed the way I would argue about it. Um, so... The, the next thing I want to talk about a little bit before I move on to some of the downsides of DWM is that I've had more fun racing uh, DWM than I ever had with i3, um, mainly because the, mainly because it's complex and it's uh, things go wrong. So I, like I said, I'm a tinkerer, uh, and I, I enjoy getting into the source code and changing things, changing the color, changing the backgrounds. Uh, like today, I figured out how to make these finally learned how to make all these scripts up here different colors i mean there's a there's a patch for that but i before i couldn't get the patch to work so i had to figure out how to get the patch to work and that took me almost a week in order to figure out how to do and figure out what was going wrong and that was it was frustrating but it was also fun um i like to rice things and the more complicated things get as long as i'm not don't get too frustrated um the more fun I have, and that's really, that's really the, I think that's where I'm at with DWM is that I'm not necessarily more productive, but I enjoy using it more. Um, so, what, who is DWM for? DWM is not for beginners because of the source code, because of the patching. I3 is by far the better window manager if you're just getting into window managers. That's my opinion. I think it most. Linux YouTubers, Linux evangelists or whatever would agree that if you're going to try a window manager and you were choosing between i3 and DWM at least, uh, i3 would be the better choice, mainly because of the more, the le the way the configuration file is laid out and it's easier to understand and stuff. Uh, but if you're a Linux user who's moved past the point where you're no longer a noob and you're more interested in learning things and learning new things and tinkering around, DWM is amazing. And I think that because it allows you to tinker a little bit more and you're interacting directly with you know the code that makes up DWM, it allows you to break things more often and then fix them. And I mean, that's a typical guy thing, I suppose, but it's true. I mean, it's just the more interaction you have with the actual code, it, it, it just makes it, you know, better. Um, so I, I guess in conclusion, I would just say that I like DWM better than i3 now. But there's nothing really wrong with i3. I just I enjoy the predictability of where the windows go and the fun that I have theming. Now, the question I have for myself is, will my love affair with DWM continue? Now, if, as you know, if you've watched the channel for any amount of time, I've been having a, an affair with Xmonad because of DistroTube, um, and it's not a it's an abusive affair because so far I've not been successful in actually using Xmonad uh, mostly because I've been averse to watching 
tutorial videos on how to set it up. I've been trying to do it on my own, and I failed spectacularly. Uh, but if I get that up and running, the question I have is, do I move over to Xmonad? Because Xmonad is a dynamic tiling window manager as well, and so it has those things going for it, but it's also written in a completely different language, so that might make up a new challenge. I'm not sure. Um, the question I have is, do I really want to learn Haskell? Has I mean, I've seen some of the code I've played around in a little bit. Haskell looks really complicated, and I thought C was complicated. It's uh, it's a new adventure, and we'll see. As, as for now, I believe I'm going to be sticking on DWM for quite a while. I am going to be playing around with more Spectre WM in the future in our video. We'll see how that goes. Um, that one's another one that has a, a config file that's not written in the programming language that the window manager itself is you know, coded in. So that'd be a that'd be an interesting way because that's a dynamic tiling window manager as well, but it's written more kind of like I3 is, so that'd be interesting to kind of play around with that a little bit more. Uh, anyways, if you enjoyed this kind of rambly nonsense video that I recorded at 12.30 in the morning, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to support the channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash linuxcast. We're really looking forward to our first Patreon. Um, if that ever happens, uh, if you want to support the channel for free, hit the subscribe button. We really do appreciate it. We do Linux type videos, FOSS, FOSS related videos almost every day of the week. Uh, we also do a podcast every Sunday and that'll be coming back in early January with me and Martin. So we'll see you then. Thanks for watching.